Okay, hello everybody. In this video, I'm gonna talk about methodological guidelines for online classes, okay? I'm gonna teach you how to teach online. Maybe you wanna become a teacher and you can teach junior, basic, or intermediate level. I'm gonna divide this video into three parts. First, lesson stages. Second, classroom management skills for online environment. And last but not least, suggestions, okay? In lesson stages, we have leading and a warm up, okay? You know, you create a positive atmosphere for learning. Uh, we have grammar presentation. You know, when presenting new language, the teacher used different strategies and techniques to make the presentation interactive. You know, you can, you can show PPTs, virtual flashcards, interview question, okay, etc. Additionally, teacher's presentation is delivered taking into consideration, you know, a student's age and level, okay? No es lo mismo para adultos que para niños. Or maybe you can use pictures, you know, uh, or making a situation. Uh, in personally speaking, I use a syntax. You know, you can find a syntax that includes a target grammatical tense. Uh, many teachers use this. Using a timeline, okay? Draw a timeline on your whiteboard. Maybe you want to teach present simple, past simple, etc. Uh, then we have controlled practice, okay? Uh, controlled practice activities are those in which students are asked to use the language in a restricted way. You know, in controlled practice, learners use the language that has just been presented and there is little room for personalization, okay? You know, the main aim of controlled practice is to help learners automatize the form of the target language. And this could be done orally or in the written form, you know? The focus is on developing accuracy rather than fluency. And then we have, for example, productive activities. You know, this stage involves learners producing language, you know, in the speaking and writing, using the, tar using the target content freely. You know, considering that the teacher has previously shown the learners the needed vocabulary and grammar structure, okay? For example, we have um, ex uh, examples of productive activities. We have surveys, you know, find someone who activities, exchanging personal information, okay? Then we have, for example, follow-up activities, okay? Are used to reinforce or assess students learning. Okay, another stage we have in follow-up activities. Um, they are used to reinforce or assess students' learning. Also, they help teachers to evaluate the effectiveness of their instructions. Okay, these activities uh, could be applied individually in pairs or grouped through discussions, okay, role play, reports, etc., either oral or written. Okay, and the last stage, wrap up, okay? Closing work, on a summary of activities and encourage reflection on their progress. Okay, maybe you can uh, give them a quiz or maybe you can ask some question related to the topic, etc. Then we have classroom management skill for online environment, okay? And we have, for example, collaborative or cooperative learning features. Then we have critical thinking skill activities, critical thinking in the Zoom classroom because everybody is using Zoom. Um, classroom management rules, okay? For example, uh, make a student practice the nonverbal feedback icons. Maybe if you are using Zoom, you can see some like icons and, and you can use them. And the last part of the video, suggestions, okay? For example, I'm gonna teach you how to use Zoom, use of the breakout rooms, you know, 
during regular classwork or in evaluation day. Okay, maybe an, another thing that I would share, another thing that another thing that I would like to share is additional tools. What the? F another thing that I would like to share is additional tool. Uh, for example, classroom management tool with assessment. You, you know, we have Google Classroom and Modo Class Dojo. Uh, for interactive engagement, uh, we have Kahoot, Microsoft Forms, Google Forms. And, and file sharing tools, we have OneDrive, uh, Google Drive, okay? And the last one would be Zoom tools. You know, we have chat. We have pools, we have reactions. Maybe you ask a question, Pepito, uh, do you agree with him? Maybe you can say thumbs up or write something in the chat box. And then we have share a screen and share files. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on the first stage, okay? You know, let's go. Let's move on to this part. Lesson stages. Yeah. Okay, easy peasy. Okay, so let's begin. Lesson stages. What the hell are they? They are these. St they are the stages during a class. Okay, as I said before, we begin with legend and warm up. Okay. What's the difference? Both warmer, okay, what's the difference? So, both warmer and leadings, both warmers and leadings, what's the difference? Okay, both warmers and leadings are activities used by the teacher at the beginning of the lesson to create a positive atmosphere for learning. There is, however, a difference between warmers and leadings. While warmers are not necessarily related to the topic of the lesson and are used to like wake up students and make them interested in English and motivated them and, and motivated to learn. Okay, and leadings actually introduce the theme of the lesson and are used to activate them. Okay, the students prior knowledge or experience of the topic. They may also include activities to check knowledge, preview or pre-teach some language points. Okay, of course, we have important considerations. Design appealing warm-up material. Okay, this is vitally important because no les va a gustar a sus estudiantes ver algo feo. Entonces, tómate tu tiempo y crea algo lindo. Work on a great and engaging opening of the lesson. In this case of the session, you know, trabaja en una gran atractiva apertura de la sesión. You have to be happy. You have to be like motivated. Okay. Um, a student's attention span for this modality is about 10 or 15 minutes. No te extiendas demasiado en un warm up. Okay. Recuerda que es una actividad previa para empezar a explicar el grammar o el tópico. Okay. And pick their curiosity. Okay, ask question a tus estudiantes, okay? So we have an example. Imagine that I'm teaching junior or even basic level. Okay, so I want to do this. So I want to practice a color, okay, and some vocabulary. And I do this. What's your favorite color? Okay, so I take into account the important consideration. Design appealing warm up material. Check. Mis materiales se ven agradables. Se ven atractivos. Son eye catching, maybe. I don't know. And work on a great and engaging opening of the session. You can say, well, guys, now we have to, you have to tell me, etc. Okay? In this case, what's your favorite color? Think for a while and tell me, what's your favorite color? A student's attention span for this modality is about 10. A student's attention span for this modality is about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay? You don't have to do this like 
an hour, okay? You just have to do this. You have to do this. Five minutes, seven minutes, okay? Another example. Uh, maybe if, you're, if you ask a question, Pepito, what's your favorite color? And then to say, my favorite color is green, it's yellow, it's red. So you, you have to say something nice. You have to say, oh, it's a beautiful color. And then you can say, draw three things of that color. Okay, you can share your screen on Zoom and they can draw. Okay, or maybe they can draw in their book and then can take a picture and then share the screen. Okay, you have to, you have to be creative with this. Okay, tienes que ingeniártelas. Okay, but don't worry, I'm going to share with you uh, some tips. Okay? Then we have steps. Okay? How can I start my class? Okay, so open the session by creating all the students. Okay, this is vitally important. When you enter to the class, you say, Hello, everybody. Hi, Pepito. Hi, Maria. Good morning, teacher, etc. Okay? It start with an interesting, engaging activity. Okay, as I said before, visual activities work well for a virtual environment. Okay, use few and easy to follow instructions. Okay, for example, imagine that you are teaching, I don't know, a basic level and this is an speaking activity. You say, for example, uh, before you begin with, uh, with the activity, you ask, what are the three parts of this speaking activity? And you write. First, we have to listen. Second, we have to repeat. And last but not least, we have to circle the new words. And then you ask the question again. Maria, what do we have to do in this activity? Uh, we have to listen. We have to... What do we have to do? That's it. Okay. And make them participate actively by raising their hands. We have the chair, we have, okay, you can use Zoom. There is an icon, raise hand, and maybe you have a lot of students. You just need to see who raised her hand or his hand. Make them participate actively by raising their hand. You have to tell your student, if you want to participate or say something, please raise your hand. We have an icon here, maybe write in the chat box, teacher, I want to do this, etc. And give students room to participate collaboratively. And give students room to participate, okay, together. But now I'm going to talk about tools, okay. Are they important? Of course. And, and why? Because a tool is a great way to keep the students engaged because it focuses on social learning and makes it fun. It's also simple to use it because it works on any device and players, okay? And fuck it. And why? Because a tool is a great way to keep students engaged because it focuses on social learning and makes it fun. It is also simple to use because it works on any device and players don't have to create an account. We have Kahoot, we have Mentimeter, okay, a lot of tools that we can use for our online classes. Okay. Um, we can use, for example, Uh, you uh, use okay and tools I mean use online resources like Kahoot, WordCloud, Mentimeter among others okay or maybe short YouTube videos or movie clips okay just five minutes three minutes okay and use a whiteboard you can explain your grammar you can explain whatever you want to explain you can you can use a whiteboard uh, and the zoom chat for example Everybody are muted, okay? So you ask, uh, you ask a question, for example, what's your favorite color? But you don't want everybody to talk at the same time, okay?
okay? So you say, write in the chat box your answer. And that's it. Now I'm gonna share with you some tips, right? So welcome latecomers, <laughs> don't forget about that. Use what they are reading now, music, trends, what TV show they follow, in general. Work on emotionally, work on emotionally satisfying content for the students or for the audience. Okay, maybe if you're teaching kids, you can use cartoons, you can use their favorite cartoons, or maybe give, you know, they love it. And so, enthusiastic, okay? Don't chicken now. You just need to be yourself and be happy. And that's all I have to say for now. See you later.